Uh, yes, I, I think you're probably right, etc. We, our, our family lived on a farm where we went to primary, local primary school, but there were no local secondary schools, so we were all sent off to boarding school. Uh, and uh, we followed the line of uh, of, of our, uh, our uncles who went to uh, went on to secondary went on to university and so uh, I wanted to milk uh, milk dad's cows and stay home but he said no you got a younger brother who will do that you're at the university and so. How does it go into university? Mm -hmm. I had a mother and a father that had another view uh, that not all, uh, all would go out to labour and if there was any potential in anybody carrying on with the university that person you should do so, and I was, I showed some potential, and so I ended up at university. And at university, etc., I ended up uh, uh, in the uh, in doing a degree in uh, education, and so that led me on to teaching. Yes, I think I did, Jetra. I uh, went into, uh, I did a, a degree and decided that I should go to Teachers Training College, uh, which meant that I would be, I would head for, you know, a teaching program, a teaching, pro uh, a, a teaching outcome. And that's what I did. Mm. Uh, first school I went to teach at training college and the first school I, I did some training at Tamaki College um, and they uh, on section there and evidently the principal was very uh, <coughs> excuse me <laughs> uh, the principal and the geography teacher was um, impressed with what I had to do, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, and they wanted me to offer me a job after I'd done training college. Offered me a job at Tamaki College, so I I went to the training college at Tamaki College. Uh, one of the things that I had learned at the university, etc., that I had a mate. Who was doing geography as a geography uh, program, geography degree program as well, and uh, he 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 joined the uh, National Airways, uh, and uh, and enticed me to take my kids up on the geography trip around uh, around the country. And I said, I'll, I'll, uh, how much would it cost the students, per student and the class of the student, to do an hour up in the air? And uh, he told me it, so it would cost this much. And so I proposed to the head of geography, etc., that I would take a, I'd like to take my class up in the air, up in the air. Flew up in Northern, down the Bay of Plenty, Hawke's Bay, round to Taranaki and up that way. Well, it gave the kids so much excitement, etc., about geography that the next year, etc., everybody wanted to do geography. And, uh, and it went on like this for a couple of years until finally I had to give it up because it became too popular. Because we had a, the school had an option. You had to take biology or geography. Well, Everybody wanted to take geography, and no one wanted to uh, do biology. And the biology teacher objected and said, "I haven't got a job, etc. I, I, I want a job, and I, I, I need to. Uh, students need to, to to take biology as well." 
And so, so, fi so finally I uh, had to give up at the fifth form level, uh, but the principal says, how about the uh, sixth form level, sixth and seventh form? So that's what I was doing after, after that, etc. And that started to grow too big too as well. But by that time I was offered a better job in another school. Absolutely, there's a whole lot of opportunities in geography, a whole lot of opportunities in history, a whole lot of opportunities in biology, and uh, and schools should uh, provide that opportunity for for kids. Uh, I just so happen to have a sympathetic headmaster uh, and a sympathetic head of department that allowed me to do that. Uh, and after I left, where's I? I left there because the education department wanted me to come to the education department as an advisor in education. And uh, so I, I, I joined the department of education and then they, after two years, they said, I want you down the head office to shape up the education system for all the ethnic groups. We had Pacific Island, we had Māori, we had uh, other ethnic groups and they wanted me to come to head office and develop programs that would help uh, ethnically different uh, children uh, because at that particular time it's at a, it was very English in its intent and in its intention uh, so, um, and they wanted me to vary it right across the country and so that's how I ended up at the university and uh, uh, helping there, helping education department, running in-service training courses as well, uh, until I uh, decided that I uh, should uh, stay at uh, uh, doing lecturing for, for some time and so I, I did, even though I felt like uh, teaching as well, and I, I um, ended up um, running a uh, the local um, the local uh, local second sorry, it wasn't a local secondary school, it was a local training college down here as well, helping there. But I had a variety of jobs in different places that helped me to innovate and allowed me to innovate, etc. Mm -hmm. But uh, education is a not a very innovative uh, industry at all, really. Oh no, it's just natural desire to do this and do this and that. And there's an opportunity there to be promoted, different jobs. And it wasn't a, uh, a huge desire on my part to be, you know, top of this and top of that, etc. I just felt as though that it was the job to do. Uh, when I was, a, I'll be younger coming out of training college and things like that, I, of course I had a young family and income was important, salary is important. And yeah, it's an important, important question. I was, uh, yeah, working in the education department for, as an advisor in Auckland, and then I moved my family down to Wellington to be in head office to develop uh, strategies and uh, to develop uh, policies, etc., alongside uh, the Department of Education. 
I, yeah, I, I uh, felt that there was a job that I should do, uh, and um, develop uh, the process, develop policy, and then put it into action around the school by running in service training courses for principals and running an education uh, in service training course for for staff. Um, I felt that the schools was needed to reflect very much uh, Māori language and Māori culture and uh, Bill Rennick, the Director General, and Peter Bogue, the Assistant uh, Director General, he felt that he was, um, he felt that, that, that we should start looking seriously at developing a um, an education system uh, that incorporated language and culture of, of Māori. Uh, and as a result of that, etc., we were putting um, putting principles, secondary and primary principles, on the marae just to give them an insight in terms of what were, what was what it ought to look like if they uh, were incorporated in Māori language and Māori culture, etc. And so we used to run in service training courses on the Marae for principals, uh, and that that gave some of the principals a pretty big shock, a cultural shock, to do that. But uh, a lot of them could see the difference and could see what needed to be done in the, in the education system. And I suggested to them that he ought not to be uh, in the, uh, on the interview panel. Um, and um, and when I was interviewed, it's after he sat in the corner all the years. And uh, when I made a comment, it's after he hit his thumb, but he's going like this all the time. If he sum up the yeah, air if I was making the right comments, etc., thing like that. Uh, and uh, well, I finally ended up uh, getting the nod to run that particular high school. I think the main reason that they were uh, were uh, encouraged was that I had a view that Māori language and Māori culture should be incorporated in the living processes of the school, of the school uh, and also in the curriculum of the school, in language, etc. Furthermore, I suggested that we should develop a way in which schools should develop a, a, a way of, uh, of family living. In other words, how do families live? how they live together, and uh, what are the outcomes of this, and I looked at the uh, at families around the world, really, not only in New Zealand, and at that particular time I had some uh, uh, students from from uh, India that had come to migrate, had migrated, and uh, it was a special group in one in high school. And so developing a sort of a, a Fano system of four different Fanos in the school, you could actually develop uh, processes which would reflect the Fano of different types, uh, the Fano of different uh, uh, of different uh, uh, different countries and Fano of different uh, different people. Uh, and so I put the in Indian uh, people in one fauna and developed a lot more uh, Indian ways of living. Uh, Pacific Islanders developed a lot more ways of Pacific Islanders at that time. And we developed also um, a, a, a music, a music, uh, a, a language 
uh, and culture of for Pacific Island people as well. Uh, and it became very popular and other principals were came to have a look what I was doing. But they also I was also invited to different in service training courses for principal talk to them. Very helpful because he, he he had a he had an insight in terms of what I was on about etc. And somehow uh, John uh, cottoned on to it and, and uh, was a, a great uh, supporter of it and innovated. He innovated uh, a lot uh, himself. And uh, uh, very fortunate because. Um, in secondary schools, the dynamism of secondary schools is that you go with the flow. You don't step out of line yet. Well, John led the flow and uh, made it easier for one of the high school to innovate in a way that reflected a lot more multiculturalism in schools. I think you're right. I think you're right, etc. In, in in that particular sense, that it was an old, rundown school. It was. It was, uh, and and the the role went down because of its old nature. Uh, and there was uh, there were other schools that sort of uh, you know invited uh, kids to their particular school. Um, and uh, and I, at the stage when I took over one in high school, it had uh, had had uh, a roll of what's about six hundred something like that. Yeah, about six hundred dollars. At that same stage, I decided that I should uh, uh, do something about uh, upgrading, and there were new buildings being developed, but not only upgrading the physical nature of it, but upgrading the sports, the curriculum, uh, staff, insight into teaching. And I set about doing that. And uh, within three years, the movement started to, to reflect a growth in uh, the role of that particular plan. When I was there, it was around about 600 about 600 uh, students, uh, and when I left to to take on another job, etc., I think it was going on to about 800 to 900. Yeah, sort of uh, keen to make sure that we had uh, innovative uh, t uh, teachers. I think that one of the things that I was ho hopeful for was that the the numbers were going down, but I knew what I had to do, uh, and that was to develop a new school so that it looked better. And fortunately, there was a building program going up, and it. Uh, was quite attractive, etc. That is one. The second idea was basically that that uh, uh, that uh, we had to develop a, a philosophy, which I call the Fano system, to develop the philosophy for uh, for, our, for our schools, and that attracted uh, uh, attracted many. And I think that the that the way in which we did it was such. That after three, four years, etc., the uh, the uh, uh, the enrollment started to go up. Yes, yes, uh, it. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it did. Um, uh, but 
uh, eventually forced us to, to develop a number of whanaus. Uh, and uh, at one stage, etc., I know that, that there were uh, whānau kids taking a, attacking a, uh, an attitude that uh, was superior uh, to kids who weren't in whānau, and so I eventually uh, I had the whole school into, into four different uh, whānaus, ba uh, basically to match the four levels that we had in the building there and the new buildings that were coming up and so by the time the new buildings were set I was ready to move them out in terms of four different whanaus. I think so. I think so. Hmm. Yeah, I think that, the, that there's a very close match between the word house and, and whanau. But I wanted to emphasize familyness really. Uh, that each person had to look after their, each other. Well, I, I think I looked at it from a different, another point of view. I think, and that is, here are some kids that. Uh, that uh, needed help and needed education, uh, so I put the uh, the uh, overseas students into one one particular whānau uh, and develop. Didn't take too long to develop a whānau sense of belonging mm -hmm. to a uh, uh, to one particular whānau in the school, uh, and I think the important point was that they felt comfortable in the way in which they operated in the in the school, very similar to the way you operate at home at, uh, you know, with mum and dad and the kids, etc. And, and, uh, and for some kids, etc., they had a tendency to knock others around, punch them, etc., and things like that. Well, I think that stopped as a result of that. They're not allowed to do that. They're allowed to look after their space, to look after themselves. So we build a philosophy of looking after each other in the final. Mm. Yeah, initially, etc., uh, uh, the education department had a scholarship for somebody to go and look at Indian uh, education, etc., and. Uh, uh, I I was uh, I was invited to take take the trip, even though I still had not really understood why I should go. In other words, what would I learn over there in India that would help me to uh, to help support the small, relatively small Indian population that I had in Wellington High School. Uh, but I went. Uh, and uh, I think I learned uh, quite a lot about what might be called integration, integrating the sort of things that needed to be done to integrate them into a school like Wellington High School compared to other schools in India. Um, I I think that um, that. One of the things that I, I learned f uh, as a result of that was basically taking them out of India and putting them in a school, whatever I had to do, and I had to work on that, etc. You know, I had to work on the language, had to work on in-service training to teachers, had to work on uh, parents, working with parents, etc., things like that. And that forced me to really start looking at the Fano system where we had different uh, different systems working, or different uh, uh, people uh, working in different places in the in the school. So Māori was one, and so I had a Māori whānau. Uh, I had a one which is an international uh, Indian one as well. It um, 
uh, and finally, etc., that the there was a, by the time of fifth and sixth form, there was a sort of integration, so that there was a, a wholeness in the whole area, even though the, we lived separately in different whanos at the third and fourth form, well, in particular, although the fifth form was exactly the same. Uh, uh, you know, it was, it was a bit of a dream in many ways. I, I hadn't copied anybody, I just decided to have a go at it. And the school, you know, the, uh, uh, our staff were very, very supportive of that sort of thing. I think they all, um, <laughs> I suspect that a lot of them. <laughs> Oh, there are a lot of regrets, I think, in that in that uh, area. Uh, one was the size of the school, very little support, uh, very little supporting uh, uh, land to grow your sport, etc. Um, and so sport suffered, in my, in my view. In so soccer was uh, was, was strong. Uh, but apart from that, and apart from netball, um, I couldn't expand at all on the, the very small, uh, this very uh, area of, uh, mm. of land. Et so I have those sort of regrets, etc. That because I felt that sport was a very important part of education, etc. And things like that. Uh, I think uh, the support I got from most staff, I really thought that uh, that I had to explain my intentions a lot, uh, and I did, and uh, I thought that it was absolutely important to get staff to think along the same lines, etc. They work along the same lines, and the final system, etc. was quite hard to uh, to push, but I kept pushing and pushing and pushing uh, until finally the people could sort of interrelate their ideas about whānau and familyness. And so uh, it was at one particular, uh, at, uh, at the early stage of whānau was a, a difficult concept for them to, to, accept, to accept, but eventually it came there. Uh, eventually, etc., I can remember uh, some uh, uh, inspectors of schools coming in, and we had a end of the year lunch, and I spent quite a bit of money on that, etc., and things like that. And they were very impressed with the sort of cohesion and friendliness and happiness uh, of the staff. Uh, because they had, they felt really good about being successful in in the whānau system, and I think that they also knew that there were other principals, visiting local principals, coming in to see me and sort of per se, what are you doing? Show you, tell us about what you're doing in the school and what. What's the philosophy that, and how do you set it up, etc.? And the staff heard about these sort of thing going on, etc. But I, you know, I didn't mention too much about it. And they they were convinced, etc., that that there was an idea there and a concept idea that we that other schools were interested in, and it was a plus a plus from my point of view because they the staff said, oh, well, it must be a pretty good idea. Uh, because I, I suppose many, many staff weren't convinced that what we were doing in terms of a whānau system uh, weren't convinced that it was a good idea. But principals of other secondary schools were visiting uh, and, uh, and it can be helped to convince them that you know, we're onto something uh, good and something good educationally.
that, that I uh, keep away from it. Not deliberately. I have never had any opportunities to uh, to go back there. Uh, I do know that after a year or so, I did go back there and and uh, I got a big uh, standing ovation by Prince uh, by the staff when I went into the staff room. Uh, but uh, I I kept kept away. Uh, from uh, from there, probably probably to allow the existing principal to ex to expand to put their views in the places yet to the other. But I didn't didn't, uh, didn't go back to high school. Uh, if I was invited, I might have gone back, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to go back to uh, to a place. Uh, that um, that I had, you know, had uh, developed a philosophy and developed a, a strategy and structure that uh, that in many ways was influenced by the building itself. As you know, it said to have gone up, said instead of going up that way, it's gone up, and so uh, the finance system supported uh, supported that way. And there were there were print, uh, department. Um, Department of Education people that were keen to sort of watch what I was doing to 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 have a look at uh, any innovation that I could make in that particular place, um, and 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 in many ways, this, the staff were keen also to have a look at. Now you know the the original buildings were on the flat ground. The new buildings were built up like that, and so what would the, what were the, what are the principal's thoughts about changing the structures of the place to suit the the vertical structure of the school? Um, and I guess that there were principals that, uh, and I know that I were was invited two or three times to talk to in service training of principals on the Marae people are there. To uh, talk to them about the Fano system, how, what does it mean, and how does it work, and things like that. However, it, uh, hopefully, it left a, a good, positive mark on the on the, on the education system.